It has been a while since my last posting, and much has happened in the month that has passed. The prawners have arrived and are fishing in the area. The salmon are growing up, and so are the lice. One of Alex's research projects is a fallow study. Fallowed means the farms have been emptied of fish. And here, for a short time, the juvenile wild salmon have a clear fish farm free migration route to sea. The pink indicates the wild salmon rivers Alex is now studying, where the fish were hatched. The top first red line represents the fallowed migration route that the Embley River fish will take. The second red line represents the migration route of the Wakeman and the Kinkum River fish, who must pass by several farms. Fallow study is going beautifully. We're comparing how fish survive and look when there's salmon farms on their migration route and when there's no salmon farms on their migration route. This is a real scientific gift and uh, only noticed it by accident when doing my plankton work that there was no farm fish in Wells Pass. I immediately designed this study. These guys look beautiful. They're fat, they're glossy, they're numerous. After finishing the fallowed migration route, we move on to sample the migration route in the vicinity of the farms. Cal A, Cal A, Coplep. These fish have lice passing two active fish farms and approaching another active fish farm. It's a much more serious situation and they're gonna run into uh, three more fish farms before they even get out of the Broughton and then another bunch of fish farms off Port Hardy. Mm. So they're not done getting lice yet. This is the species Chummer Pink and that's if they have a very young louse and that's if they have a louse that's a couple of weeks old. So you can see that among this group a lot of them had lice that were a few weeks old. Both the fallow root Nothing. No lice. No lice. Wherever there's fish farms, there's lice. Wherever there's no fish farms, there's no lice. It's really simple science. Spending a lot of time proving it though. Spending a lot of time proving it, <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, that's what it takes, that's what we'll do. In order to keep the lice levels under control, the farms have been using a chemical treatment called slice to treat their fish. Although slice is quite a toxic substance to be releasing into the environment, it seems to have been quite effective in lowering the levels of lice. To me, the use of chemicals seems like trying to use a band-aid to hold back a flood. Earlier in April, we had two American visitors from the Wild Fish Conservancy join us on Alex's sampling rounds. My name is Kurt Beardsley. We're from the Wild Fish Conservancy. I'm their director. It's Micah, one of our ecologists. And we're from Washington. We have fish farms now. We have a few. And we have legislation that encourages the expansion of fish farms. And with BC taking the uh, ban off of net pen expansion, we also thought that was a problem. And so we're looking at kind of getting ahead of the quite obvious problems with net pens. There's the louse. Hmm. Does the slice kill them or force them off the fish? The slice prevents the, the adults from molting. Yeah. The lice levels are really low right now, but the problem is it costs half a million to treat a farm for sea, for sea lice. The parasitologists all say they're going to get resistant and we're going to need a new drug. In Norway, they have what they call a mosaic of drugs. So they keep jumping family of drugs to try to fight the resistance thing. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing is now that they're dumping tons of food that's, that's inoculated with this drug mm -hmm. that affects everything with a shell. Mm -hmm. So that's your crabs, your prawns, your shrimp, but it's also all the little copepidites mm -hmm. in the uh, plankton layer, the copepods, that these fish and others, feeding on. yeah, it's the base of the food chain. And nobody here has looked into that, what's going on there. Uh, the shrimp fishermen are angry because mm -hmm. they think they have been affected by slices. You know, I hate the line that the currents are washing these farms clean, mm -hmm. because we all know it's not going nowhere. I noticed that DFO, no matter what I said, they always said, there's no evidence. That was the word, the line they always used. And I was like, okay, so you need the evidence. And the rigor of the monitoring is... There was nobody out here looking. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Exactly. There's no evidence, but we're not going to 
not looking. Yeah. That's right. So classic. I'm making darn yeah. sure there's no evidence. But those guys in that department are scared to death of this issue. Mm -hmm. They're just terrified, and I don't really know why. That's, yeah. Was at a conference a couple weeks ago down in Vancouver, and um, Daniel Pauly spoke there. Oh yes. And it was great. He actually used your example in Sea Lice uh, about uh, the problem with how uh, our natural resource agencies work and how science goes through these layers of different scientists who become more and more policy-like as they go up hmm. and hmm. that ultimately the answers that come out are the answers that are fed in from the top beforehand. Sea Lice aren't a problem. The following week, a research crew contracted by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans was in the area to sample fish. DFO is the government agency in charge of protecting wild fish stocks. However, they also now have a strong mandate to promote salmon agriculture. As an organization, DFO seems to have taken the official position that there is no evidence that the farms are harming the wild stock. There have been major discrepancies between Alex's findings and DFO's findings. For the second year in a row, the Pacific Salmon Forum has paired Alex with a DFO biologist, Brent Hargraves, to conduct a joint sampling project. Very rich area here. I think it's, to me, I've worked the entire British Columbia coast, and I think this is one of the richest areas in BC. We've got the highest concentration of killer whales in the world. So they're here for a reason, and that's probably that it's the high productivity of the area. We're here in the Broughton working on the juvenile salmon and sea lice project, um, basically trying to determine the, where the sea lice that are found on juvenile salmon, pink and chum salmon in particular, where they come from and what the effect is on the survival of those fish. So the real question is, are the farms producing more sea lice than is there naturally and I think it's pretty clear now from the research that's been done that that's true. Um, there is good evidence that there's something strange going on here, something different going on here. Now that may or may not be the result of the salmon farms. We're not sure of that yet. I mean I think um, I'm becoming more and more convinced that that's likely that that is a source of the sea lice. Um, that, so that's sort of stage one. The next stage is what effect of those sea lice having on juvenile salmon. There are still a whole bunch of questions here that need to be answered, and I think we're making progress on them, but we don't have the final answer yet, mm. so. I have to admit, Bren's answer surprised me. I was getting used to DFO's stance that there was no evidence that the lice were coming from the farms. I'm curious to see what will become of his findings. It was only a week later, in mid-May, when the lice numbers took a sudden jump. Suddenly, in the last few days, it's become really clear that the fish that have gone through the Broughton and are now going out into Queen Charlotte Strait are heavily infected. I've looked at over 9,000 fish in the Broughton this spring, and in general, they all had very few lice. But then, we get to now, what's happening right now, and suddenly, the numbers jump up, and all of the fish have lice. These numbers are telling us about the wiping out of a run of pink and chum salmon. Better life through drugs just never works. The lice may become resistant. Maybe that's even what we're seeing this year. As we're talking here, there's hundreds and thousands of fish dying of sea lice. We're losing approximately 80% of our wild pink salmon and chum salmon in the Broughton Archipelago. It's, it's very, very hard as a biologist to look at these fish day after day after day. The scale of suffering that we have witnessed, it just, it hurts. These fish feed everything around them, including us. We are seven years into this situation. Government has looked at it. Industry has said they're handling it. This is not handled. All the government has really done to date on this issue is research it and monitor it. They haven't actually done anything to help the wild fish in the water. DFO has killed other fish stocks doing that. The East Coast cod stocks, one of the biggest biomasses of protein that humans can eat on this planet, went down while DFO was studying it to death. And I see the exact same thing happening here. 